Hey everybody, how you doing? All five of you so far, which is uh, probably a better start than I usually have for these things. So uh, first thing, uh, if you can't hear me or see me, let me know real quick. I think everything's working okay. You better get started. The <laughs> Hey Gary. How you doing? I'm going to send, I'm going to e email out a bunch of links here. If I just sent the email. If you guys would like to uh, join me in the panel or any of you that aren't, uh, Austin, uh, Hell's Pond, if you, if you would like to join me in this little panel and keep me company while I fool around uh, with this quad, uh, feel free. Just uh, let me know in the chat, send me your email address and I'll, I'll shoot you a link. Uh, <clears throat> this is an impromptu uh, deal on Tuesday night. Um, I don't usually do Tuesday nights, but uh, I, di I did. Uh, I did want to finish building building this little quad, and uh, I have a confession to make, and that is that uh, I I pretty well finished it <laughs> between the last. Uh, the last video on this, but I have a lot of configuration stuff I want to go over with people that might be interested. And, uh, I want to show, show you exactly, exactly what I did. I have, I, I haven't put props on it yet. And, uh, um, I want to finish going over all the, the, uh, BL heli suite and beta flight configuration stuff. I don't know if you remember, if you saw the first one, I was trying to get BL heli suite to work so that I could reverse the engines and uh, the two of the motors that I couldn't get it to load the, uh, I couldn't get it to show the, the, uh, the controls. It, it read the data, but it wouldn't work. And uh, silly me, I didn't realize that this new uh, latest version of this uh, Mamba F7 uh, flight controller board has uh, BL Heli 32, which is the latest version of BL Heli. And you need, BL Hell 32 configurator. So I went and got that and loaded it and did reverse the motors. But I'm going to show you guys uh, <clears throat> how I how I did that how I did that as well. So uh, hey Gary, I uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to join me or not, but uh, did you get the email at least so I know it went out? Let me uh, let me know that. Ah, uh, what else is new, Austin? Um, I almost forgot your name the other night, but uh, I was talking about the uh, the tip you gave me uh, on uh, how to have the uh, VTX automatically change uh, power when you arm to disarm the quad, which is without a doubt the single coolest thing that uh, that I've that I found out about uh, Betaflight, and uh, it works great, and uh, it, it really uh, doesn't seem to have any any relationship to the throttle position at all. It um, you just click the switch and uh, and it and it changes the power to whatever two three or four whatever you set. And when you disarm the quad, it uh, it goes back. Aha, uh -huh. Gary! I got I got your email. I see that. Let me. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay. Um, did two flights today with Paul Hodges from Phantom Hodges Drones, and uh, just put one of them up. Uh, on the interwebs there. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just try, you know, he came over and said, well, let's go fly. And I said, yeah, all right, let's go. And he said, where do you want to go? And I said, well, uh, I don't know. And we started driving around looking for trains to shoot. We ended up uh, in Brantford, Ontario, shooting the Grand River. And then we went to Paris, Ontario, and shot the Grand River. So... <laughs> oh, that's cool. So yeah. basically what you're saying is uh, you shot the Grand River. Twice. What? <laughs> I'm assuming that was in two different locations of the same yeah. river. Yeah. yeah. Um, I published the second flight first because I liked it better. <laughs> cool. And, uh, I'll probably put the uh, Brantford one out uh, tomorrow. Oh, good. I'll have to look at that. I have, I've been busy getting set up for this little thing and uh, oh, yeah. I haven't had a chance to watch many YouTube videos. I see, uh, uh, got a notice that Ken Heron put up one about how to use audio in, uh, 
and that might be interesting since he's an old radio engineer. I think uh, that might be uh, that might be interesting. Uh, I've always had a problem with that. You know, it would be nice to use the ambient sound that you have. Maybe I should just be turning on my phone on the recorder or something. Well, yeah, um, it, it's it's. Uh, uh, I have the Zoom H6 recorder, and, and, and but most of the time, if I'm out and I wanna and I wanna shoot something going on, like show myself setting up the drone or flying the drone or whatever, I, yeah. I have my I have my GoPro with me with the with the external mic, and uh, just uh, leave it running. Yeah. Well, well you, you know, so it, and it's going to pick up all the ambient audio around and you may not, you know, when you edit it in, you may not use everything. But if you synchronize the beginning of your drone flight with with the on the timeline in your editor. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, separate the audio track from unlink the audio track from the uh, from the video track and just yeah. leave it there as background and then uh, chop up the video track in the timeline in and out. Yeah. Uh, and you'll have a, a synchronized uh uh, background deal. So that's that's how I do it most of the time. Um, oh, I, did. I saw a video that Dave Stradlinski did in Nova Scotia, and it was waves crashing on the beach, and the sound was perfect. You know, and I, I said, how did you get your drone to record that? And he said he just used the wave file and synchronized it so that when the wave hit the hit the beach, he synchronized the sound. I tell you, he could, he, could, he could win an Academy Award for seven. Oh, you mean he just used a stock file of waves crashing yeah. on the beach? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and it, it was fabulous. I figured it out. Ah, oh, Conrad's here. How are you, sir? <laughs> hey, Carlos, how you doing, buddy? I was just hanging out, uh, live streaming with Lucky Day, Newland, Drone TV. We need to make you a little bit louder. You or me? I don't know. Can you, or do I, or do I need to do it from here? Testing one, two, three. Yeah, it's kind of low. I can bump you up a little bit. Uh, uh, one, two, one, two. All right, I bumped up your volume, so it'll be all right. Uh, you don't hear any humming or noises, right? No. I'm away from the AC. But yeah, no, it's fine. I'll, hey, I'll let you know now that I know who's the please. culprit. I'll, I'll let you know if, if you're if you're uh, ruining my whole program, Peter Carroll. Yeah. Peter Carroll's in house, man. You're up. He's up. You're up early. Uh, isn't it like three o'clock in the morning where you are? Or is it nine o'clock in the morning where you are? I know you're about, I know you're three hours difference in Spike and Spike's 12 hours difference than us. So, uh, wow. Wow. Is so, he talking? Uh, Somebody talking? No, you're talking to the chat, right? Yeah, I'm talking to the chat. 8 a.m. here. Okay, so he's two hours different. Oh, good. Well, it's not the middle of the night for you. So have a cup of coffee, man, and uh, and uh, glad to see you. Glad to see you. Always, uh, always so welcome. I'm getting, I'm getting two three inches built for me. You're getting what? Easy route. Two three inch quads built for me. Why don't you build them yourself, you? <laughs> uh, you can call me. I deserve it. <laughs> wuss? How about wuss? Wuss there is a go. good. Wuss, wuss is a good. Wuss is a. Knucklehead. Yeah. I'm so what are you charge. what are you building? What are you getting? Uh, all right. I'm gonna have to use the phone. It's uh, Armaton. Hold on. It's gonna look a little funny. A three uh, inch we, a uh, three inch Armaton. Yes, it's called. Hold on. I will let you know. I'll give you detail. Whatever I'm getting or whatever I'm reading to you is gonna be times two. Oh, you're yes, actually getting one. two of the same thing? Yes. It's uh, Armaton Japularis. I haven't heard of that. It's a three-inch quad. Two diatome mambas. I guess that's the flight. That's the board. Yeah, you getting the F7 or the F4? It says 2020. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the size, 20 millimeters uh, mounting yeah. holes. But I'm not it, sure. You that. don't know if it's in a, How much did the boards cost? Did they cost $80 or did they cost $40? Two are eighty dollars, almost. Two, just under. two of them for eighty dollars. Seventy-six to be exact. For two of them, yeah, that's the F four yeah. board. Uh, I'm Any surprised. I'm, oh, it's a terrific board. Uh, okay, and, that's what and he for said. what and for what you're doing, I don't think you need. You really need the F seven because you're not going to uh, be <laughs> tricking it out probably like this crazy right. little thing that I built. But um, 
No, I, I almost thought of it. It, it. The problem is that they they sell them they sell them out faster than mm. uh, they sell them faster than they can keep them in stock. Most of these places, I know that uh, 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 race day quads. I had an e I said send me an email. You know when you get them. So I got an email and I waited till the next morning and I I was going to order a couple of them just to have them because they're so cheap at, 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 for the whole stack and they're already gone. I should have wow. jumped. I should have jumped on it. And now uh, TBS Unify HV VTX. Yeah, you can't go wrong with the uh, with the TBS VTX. Okay. Foxier Monster Mini FPV camera. Okay, that's going to be a nice quad. What are the what motors are you using? Uh, hold on. Two. Well, Aluminier Axi FPV antenna. Each. Well, you know, one. Yeah. There's okay. Two of those. Two XM Plus receivers. Okay. It has two 1,000 capacitors. I guess 1,000 something. I don't know what the 1,000 is. Uh, micro, uh, micro, micro farads. Okay. And then uh, Matex Lost Model Buzzer. Oh, okay. Good. And six sets of GemFam Flash 3052 propellers. What kind of motors? I'm looking at that. Hold on. No motors. He's building your quad with no motors. You know, that's like when you buy a car, you get no wheels. I'm sure there has to be motors somewhere. <laughs> you think? <laughs> <laughs> I, had a a quad, a I had a quad built uh, two Mitch. It was a uh, kid in China for 50 cents on a bowl of rice put together with Mavic Air. Austin Powers, you read the chat, Austin Power, Carlos Austin Powers says, a good thing you're having it built. He says, that's a tough build, that frame. It's very tight. Is it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, good. He, he preferred the uh, the Gecko 3-inch. But but I'll tell you, I am in absolute love with this uh, Acrobat, Acrobrat 3-inch frame that I just finished here. Man, this this uh, this is just uh, was just terrific and in a, in a few seconds after we get done conversating a little uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll show you, it, you it, yeah I actually actually uh, let me give you a little uh, excuse why I'm why I've got most of the work done already and and that is you remember how difficult it was to try to hook up all those wires to those tiny little pads and and trying to to do it while I was live on the air and, and trying to make sure I got the right wires in the right place and trying to keep it all centered in the camera frame where, where uh, uh, it, it was just too cumbersome. So it was much easier for me to do all that behind the, the, the illuminated magnifying, magnifying, oh. lens, which, which would have been very hard for me to, uh, to show. Yeah. yeah. Eight, eight, eight hyper light motors. I'm not for I'm not familiar with that, but that doesn't mean anything because I'm new and I'm not familiar with a lot of stuff. RD FPV, how you doing? How do you like the Acrobat, Mitch? Uh, I haven't flown it yet. I've, I've, I'm going to start showing you uh, what is very close to the finished product, and and I thought that uh, I'd show you everything that I got on it. The only thing that I haven't installed on it yet is the uh, is the GPS. Uh, and uh, uh, that's because the GPS that I have it requires 3.3 volts. Now, the larger flight controllers usually have a 3 volt, 3.3 volt pad because that's what traditionally Spectrum receivers use. Um, but this little mini F7 uh, does not have a 3.3 volt, and they really warn you on this. Uh, GPS do not use five volts. You will uh, you'll burn it out. So, you know, for fifteen bucks, I had to go in and get a different GPS module that was designed to run on five volts, and I'll have I'll have that tomorrow. But that I'll show you I'll show you where that thing's going to get stuck on there. And uh, Mitch, it's a uh, <clears throat> Hyperlite fourteen oh seven thirty twenty two kV race series. I'm, oh, I'm sure it'd be a great motor. Be a great motor. Is this somebody that builds these things professionally? Actually, yeah. Maybe with any luck, I'm going to meet RDFPV because uh, it's one of our friends, mutual friends, MD95. 
Oh, okay. So you're uh, up I'm there. Go, I'm going to drive to Maryland and uh, no, I'm going to drive to Maryland and pick it up. And he's going to help me hook it up and teach me a little of this. Little oh, of that. wow. That's, that's terrific. So uh, put, your face, put your face back on the screen and oh, okay. uh, see you. Sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Only because I wanted to read, you know, the, the specifics, as they say. Uh, Furball, Kim in the house. Hey, Kim, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, I've got a nice, nice, nice little turnout to start with here. This is great. And uh, somebody said they saw Rodney. I didn't see Rodney in here yet. Uh, drone shots. How are you? Welcome, welcome. So anyway, let me uh, let me do this. Let me go ahead and uh, switch over to uh, to my table over here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna lock the uh, the, the stream on on me. So. Uh, you guys can make noise. You won't. You won't uh, switch the picture over. And I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you what is almost the finished product here. And uh, then we're going to we're going to hook it up uh, to Betaflight. Go over to Betaflight settings. Um, make sure I got all that right. Um, going to uh, uh, hook it up to the BL Heli and show you how I reversed reversed the motors. And basically, just talk about uh, talk about how how I got it set up because what I have here, uh, is, I'm going to try to keep it centered for you, and maybe get some get get some good light on it. So anyway, this is this is the finished uh, this is the finished quad, and uh, let's start by tipping it up here, and I'll let me turn it around so that it's right side up, and you can see. You can see what I got, and I'll show you where where everything where everything is in this in this quad. So let me let me start at the back, and in the back they give you this nice little three D printed this little red thing here, uh, and these uh, straws to hold the receiver antennas, which is nice. And I've got a, a, a Free Sky uh, RXSR in here with with telemetry, and What's really cool is the receiver is right here. You see it? And mm -hmm. the, the antennas just come right out of the receiver and go right into these tubes. And it really gets them out there away from, away from the quad. And the receiver just sits in there and it's, it's, not, it's not really gone anywhere. Now this, uh, this um, let me see if I can get some better light on it so you can see this carbon fiber plate right here that goes across. Let me move this wire out of the way. This plate right here that goes across is where I'm going to stick the little GPS antenna. And uh, the GPS antenna, of course, it, when it's sitting flat on the ground, it'll be angled backwards just a little bit because that's the angle of this thing. But the cool part is when it's flying, this thing will tip up. And when it tips up, that'll actually be... Uh, um, pointed right up at the sky. So that that's where the GPS antenna is going to go. Um, the Your camera uh, angle is? Pardon me? Your camera angle is at what? I probably got it about 25 degrees. I'll I'll okay. I'll adjust that. I'll, you know, start out with it a little lower to yeah, fly yeah. a little slower at first. I'm going to have to step out here, Mitch. Uh, Pardon me? I said I'm going to have to step out. We'll uh, catch you next time. Oh, okay, Gary. Well, thanks for thanks okay. for jumping in. Good to see you. My pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, take care. See you again soon. Okay, buddy. Are you gonna um, be able to adjust it easily, or gonna have oh to yeah, it's it's tight, but I can I can just uh, I can just move it up and down. Oh, that's perfect. That's There's good. two screws perfect. on the side if I want to loosen it up, but it uh, okay. it's real easy to adjust. There's plenty, so plenty you can of room. Do it on the field, I'm saying. Oh, oh yeah, I can easily. I can do it. You know, any anytime I want. So then, working forward a little bit, right here is the VTX. And the VTX antenna just comes right out here and sticks up. And I've got a, uh, I've got a tie wrap. Let's see if we can see it. I've got a tie wrap right, right there that's clamping that antenna down so that that tiny little connector can't pop off the, can't pop off the board. It's, it's really in there. It's not going anywhere. And it's nice because it's just, you have a crash or something, it's loose. It's, it's, it, and so are these things. This is a, t a TPU mount, so it'll bend all over the place. And That's you probably won't, won't, won't break any antennas. Another nice thing is I can see the display 
from the uh, VTX to tell me what channel, although I can see, I do see that in, in the goggles, in the goggles too. So that's the back part. Then of course the, uh, the power lead and I have the capacitor actually out here across the uh, XT30. So it doesn't take up any room inside, inside the quad. What does and the capacitor that, do? Uh, it, it, it filters noise uh, motor noise out of the power signal. So uh, they, they really say on this model, on this controller board, that you really only need the capacitor when you use 6S, but a capacitor can never hurt it. Right. Uh, uh, so I put it, I put it in there. They gave it to me, so I put it in there. Um, so then let me, let me stop a second, look at the chat and see. Uh, Furbo Kim, those guys are coming to get me at 7 p.m. Oh, they're up there, Kim. They, they, they're up there to uh, uh, visit with you. That's what I guess. There may be dynamite involved. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, oh, I see. No, he says uh, these Canadian beavers are doing huge damage, and these guys asked me to see with my drone what the heck they are doing before they deal with <laughs> okay back to this so then we're, we're moving moving up here uh there's the main flight stack the esc and and the flight controller and uh then on and on top of that of course is the uh, the tray for the the tray for the battery and the battery strap then moving towards the front uh right uh Right here is a uh, up front front of the quad. There we go. Run the wrong way. The, this thing looks the same for the front and the back. This is a uh, a buzzer with a built-in battery that uh, makes one hell of a lot of noise. And if 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 the power ever shuts off, it'll start it'll start squealing until you until you turn it off. So if you crash and lose your battery, it, it's got a bright LED on it and it makes a lot of noise and everything. And then then up here. Uh, on switch on. is the camera there's a, a push button and when you plug the quad in and unplug it you got 30 seconds to push the button before it starts going off of course if it starts going off you can push the button it'll stop it but anytime it has power and then loses <coughs> power it it, uh, it 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 goes off so uh basically what i what i have in this thing um uh, and and i'm sure most of the fpv guys know uh uh, what 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 all this stuff is, but it has uh, it has the buzzer, and the buzzer is set to I can I can actually take uh, and and push the momentary switch on my transmitter, uh, so and it'll start beeping. So if if it lands somewhere in tall grass and I want to find it quick, I can do that. Uh, if if it fails safe, so it'll start beeping. If it uh, if it loses range, and this is also going to have GPS rescue in it. Um, but uh, it's got the buzzer. The camera is a run is a run cam uh, micro Swift three, and it's got uh, the, the run cam camera control hooked to one of the UARTs uh, on on the flight controller board. So I can actually I can change any of the internal camera settings like uh, uh, aspect ratio, brightness, uh, color balance, and all that right from my my transmitter rather than having to plug in one of those little control boards. So I have camera control. The, the VTX in the back has uh, uh, IRC Tramp uh, protocol smart audio, which means that I can adjust uh, any of the uh, channel and transmitter power also from my transmitter. And you do that before you fly when it's disarmed. And I'll, I'll show I'll show everybody how that works here, and uh, the receiver the RSXR has uh, telemetry, and that's hooked up to another UART, uh, so that all the telemetry from from the flight controller, the the, the ESC current and uh, the, the core temperature and and all the other uh, battery voltages and everything are available uh, to both show up on my on-screen display if I want to clutter it up that much uh, or show up on uh, right on my radio itself as as uh, as telemetry so it's got it's got the full telemetry it's going to have the GPS module in it which will be set up to 
what they call rescue GPS. Uh, and that's designed, uh, if it fail safes, it'll, it'll immediately go into stabilized mode and level that's off and point. climb to a certain altitude, turn around and start flying home, at which point you hope you get whatever, you know, you get your radio reception back or you start seeing your goggles again if you happen to fly out of range. Uh, and you can also trigger the return to home with a switch on the transmitter. So that's a, a you set that up in the modes modes tab. Um, it's uh, so it's going to have the GPS rescue and, and it's got the, the buzzer to locate it. So uh, in the in the OSD display uh, up at the top, I'm going to have it display the uh, coordinates, the latitude and longitude. Uh, and, and like I mentioned before, the nice thing about that is if you do uh, go down somewhere far from where you are, uh, you can go and watch your, your, your DVR. Uh, it'll also show those uh, coordinates in the telemetry uh, uh, of the radio, too. So you'd be able to see them on the display of the radio. But if, if, if the signal's lost, you might not get that. But you can go look at the DVR and uh, uh, take those coordinates, enter them into uh, Google Maps, and it should should take you within a couple meters of the thing. So, Mitch, let me interrupt you real quick. Carpenter Rick joined, and uh, RDFPV wants to know what props are you using. Are you I'm going to use, use the uh, the little uh, Gemfan three three inch. I, I think that's. Uh, hold on a second here. Hello, Carpenter Rick. The same props that I have on on the Tyro. These these little three inch yeah. props here. Um, this thing just flies super with, with these props. And this is the same motor on the same motor on this quad, uh, as I put on, as I put on, uh, on this quad. So, uh, and the weight's about the same. So the, the, uh, uh, the thing ought to, the thing ought to, ought to be, ought to be fine. Um, I'm, I'm kind of new at this, uh, RD and, uh, uh, drone shots asked me if they're a 30, 28, more than likely I'd have to go get a, I don't have a package of them here to look at the package, see exactly what size it is. Um, I, uh, um, you know, if, if it works, it, if it works, I'm happy with it. I'll, I'll still learn in all the fine points of this and God, there's a lot of, there's a lot of fine points. The quad comes in about two, 240 grams with the battery. So it's it's just under 250 and that seems to be about standard for what i uh, i see on the reviews usually these three inches that are w with the carbon fiber frames and all are coming in are you just talking 250 price pardon me no 250, 250 grams weight oh, okay right. which okay. which you want to stay just under 250 yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not uh, okay. the faa is not involved too heavily in it so uh it works pretty good i'm going to be using this will fly with 4S, but you know I'm not a killer pilot yet, so I'm I'm happy with the performance of these of these three inches on on 3S batteries, and I've got the uh, I've got the 60 the 650 uh, milliamp 3S, and you talk about something that just fits on here. It uh, let me zoom out a little bit here. That's good right there. It uh, it just uh, let's see. Slides right in here. The other way, the other way. No, not the other way. Doesn't delete? No. no. Goes this oh, way. It swings all the way back? Yep. Oh, cool. And then this this tucks down the side. Oh, okay. This plugs right into it. See how, how, oh, cool, nice. how cool is that? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug it in, and you'll hear this uh, this beeper. Let me turn the radio on. Now these F7s get hot, so I don't—you don't want to leave them plugged in uh, really too much. But what I want to do here is, uh, if I hit this uh, switch, I get I get the beeper to beep, and the beep and the beeper's got a nice bright little flashing light on it. You can see. Um, now I'm going to take this. I'm going to try to show you this. <sighs> trying to play producer and and talent here at the same time but let me switch over to to my other to my side camera here and what I wanted to show you 
was the uh, the on-screen display here. Okay, and I'm going to try to a little higher, right there. There it is. Okay, so I don't know if you can read what I've got on there, but it it says uh you know the battery voltage. Then right under that it says A1 colon one. Now the last that's the channel band A uh, uh, channel one, and this the third one tells me what the power setting on on the uh, on the transmitter is. So if I if I let me see if I can get that a little little closer where you can see it. There we go. If I arm it. I'm going to arm it now. You see it changed to three, A13. That means that the transmitter automatically just changed to 200 watts. Oh, I disarm it and oh, it I goes the power. It yeah, it goes back power. to it goes back to one. <clears throat> if I disarm it, it goes back to one. Uh, which which is uh, really nice because if it's sitting here on the bench like this, then uh, then it doesn't uh, it doesn't burn itself up. So let me let me take this camera. <laughs> you pardon pardon all the uh, shaking professional camera moves here. <clears throat> Did I just see a picture of Marilyn? Yeah, that's on my wall. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, I have a lot of memorabilia here. Now I'm going to unplug this thing, and this is this is what happens. If I uh, oh that other buzzer. If I don't yeah if I don't pay attention to it, the the battery's unplugged. If I don't pay attention to this thing, it's going to uh, remind me that it's there. The second buzzer, right? Or the first? The only no, it's the only buzzer. I I don't have oh, the, what really? they call the D shot buzzer even turned on. That's where the motors spin. But this thing, uh, thirty seconds is a long time when you're waiting, but it 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 does it. <laughs> Make a liar out of me. It's going to work. Ah, uh, you know, maybe it won't. There it goes. There you go. Wow, that's <laughs> loud. And that'll keep going until you disable on it. Until I, until I turn it off. There's a, and there's a tiny little button on the front. Oh, here. I'm on this camera now. Let me get back to the other camera. And you can hear that thing from 100 or 200 yards away. Well, I'm deaf now, so I can't hear anything. Yeah. At any rate, you, you stick your finger in there and just push the little button, and that'll stop it. And now, whoops, I didn't push the button. Use the stick? No, I can reach it. I just wasn't pushing oh, okay. it in. Is, does it click? You yeah, you can feel it. It's one of those okay. tiny little tiny little buttons. But uh, but I got it. Uh, I got it shut off. Now, normally, you know it's going to do that. So before it starts beeping, you can stick your finger in there and hold the button down for two seconds, and it won't beep. It'll 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 cancel, it'll cancel that uh, that circuitry. So this thing uh, seems seems to be pretty well ready to go. I've got everything everything tied down with tie wraps where I need it. All the wiring is nice and neat. Uh, it, it, it's a cool looking little quad. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, like I say, the GPS will just mount right here on the back, right on this little thing here, sticky tape, and stick up this way. So when the quad is flying at an angle, it's looking straight up. And of course, these antennas are, are sticking up higher, and the, and the uh, video transmitter antenna is almost straight up in the air uh, at that angle. So it ought, to, it ought to work pretty good. The only thing I don't like, this is a, is a fairly big camera, long camera, this run cam. And I, I do have uh, some of the... Uh, the lens, where is it? Let me let me show it here. I don't know if you can see it, but the lens sticks out a little past this carbon, which you have to push it forward a little bit. To nah, it. there's no adjustment that, that, uh, on this no, frame. No, 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 to push the whole quad forward so we can see it on camera. Better. Oh, oh, right there, right there, and then face up again. Yeah, the, the if you look oh, at okay. it from the side, the oh, uh, I see what you mean. It camera sticks out. Sticks the out. Place. There it is. Sticks yeah, yeah, out yeah. just just a little bit. So, you know, I could, if I crashed into it uh, and the frame and everything else didn't stop it, I, you know, you could clip a branch or something, but with right. the kind of flying I do right now, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I, I could probably take some uh, carbon fiber and uh, make a little plate and screw it on the side to stick out past the camera, but I'm just going to go with, with this, uh, this the way it is. Now, Mitch, BC Morris is greeting you, just so you know. Hi, Mitch. What VTX did you I used uh, an HGLC 
uh, VTX. And uh, let me see if I can give you the number. It's it's uh, it goes to uh, 350 watts. It does 25, 100, 200, and 350. And it's the uh, HGLRC TX20 V2. Uh, it was, you know, relatively inexpensive um, and, uh, it, you know, s small 20, 20 by 20 stack. And, uh, I, you know, I, I watched some reviews on it and, and saw most of the guys had positive things to say about it. Uh, EBR FPV joined us just soon. Hey, EBR, how you doing? He took a break from flying. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. it's after midnight there, just so you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess it's tough to fly at midnight, isn't it? Yeah, a little tricky. Yeah, so let me get uh, let me get myself back here and uh, click off of me so you can we can see Carlos. Is uh, let me get my microphone over here. Anybody, anybody looking would like to come into the uh, to the panel? Love to have you. Let me know. Uh, especially some of the FPV guys. Um, yeah. Yeah. EBR is camera shy. <clears throat> All right. BC Mars. Well, we gotta we gotta make uh, we gotta make some of these guys moderators that that aren't because we usually trust everybody enough to make them feel like part of the family. So let me Support let me go ahead and as well. and do that and. If you don't behave yourself, well, take it away. <laughs> uh, so uh, just put a stack in my 210 Aladdle. Oh, yeah, I, I, I used um, uh, BC. I, I, I used in this build, in, the, in my Marmiton, um, in here, I, I have the uh, Atlatl HV uh, video card, a, a video transmitter in the back here. Let's see if I can, I can see it or not. Uh, yeah, right back, right back in there, and that's a great card, very powerful. And this has got the uh, the uh, Holy Bro uh, Kakute F7 stack in it. And this is what the little GPS antenna looks like that, uh, that's going to get stuck on top of that little three inch build. But, uh, and this one's got the uh, CADEX uh, Turtle uh, HD camera in it with the, with the board under, under here. So I, haven't, um, I built this and I'm new at this and I've flown it a couple times and it just flies great, but I'm kind of uh, treating it gingerly. I um, send to fly my beaters. Uh, most of the time, although this thing flies so good, <laughs> you, you know how it is when you. But you're getting the hang of acro, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so if anything, you want to just work on the tricks, so to speak, right? Well, I, I probably, being as that I'm an RC pilot and flew a lot of acrobatic RC and jets, uh, mm -hmm. my style of flying is is big and smooth, you know, and, and not, not so much the, the gap diving and right. all that really, I'm an old guy, you know, all that exciting heart pounding stuff to see how close you can, how you can dive down a laundry chute for 200 feet or, you know, that kind of stuff <laughs> is not, not for me, not right. for me. I was, uh, uh, showing, I got it. I got it here. Uh, uh let me see. I, I have, uh, hang on a second. Let me uh, go over to uh, what a producer I am. Here it is. This is uh, this is that little that little um, Tyro seventy nine that that little three inch quad that that uh, that I was flying the other day, and uh, with the new right? with the new motors, yeah, with the new motors on it, and uh, um, it. Uh, what stack do you so, run on your armature? See, see that nice big loop? That's my style of flying. I like. Did you see that? Yeah. yeah. Did you catch the loop? Yeah. That's. And again, I'm. I, keep in mind, I'm still. I'm still very, very new at this. Uh, and and uh, I, I, I still uh, have. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to wreck the quads. I, I 
tend to approach flying with a lot of with a lot of caution, um, as opposed to uh, trying to daredevil and see. Just uh, I'm happy to put it up, fly it around, look at the scenery, do a loop or two, do a roll or a split S or something like that. And uh, uh, you know, I've been I've been doing this for two three months now, and, and that's about it. And uh, uh, you know, when I get on the simulator, I can, I can do everything, you know? Uh, <laughs> and, and it's funny. I just said, uh, did you see uh Mel 400 AGL? Did you see the video he posted? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he posted, uh, he posted it's the video of him flying the, uh, the, uh, tiny Hawk. Yeah. And, uh, and he, uh, what was, what was cool was that he, uh, uh, uh started out with the simulator and he was just sky king he was just doing a bang up job on a simulator and then he took the little drone outside and and you know this from your own experience too just you know learning with these things you know that uh uh when you don't have your drone at risk on a simulator and you know that when you crash it just resets yeah it's a whole different world yeah pressure. it's a whole different world and uh, I, uh, uh, I'm with you. Yeah, I, I find that. Well, you, I, well, Carlos, you're flying. You're doing great, man. You're you're uh, you, you're gonna you're gonna love. You don't have a five inch quad, do you? Do you have a five inch no, quad? No, I'm gonna go three inch. I might go to four S battery on the three inch. Get used to the power, and and then eventually graduate. I'm gonna I, tell I'm, you. I'm gonna take the baby steps, so to speak. I'm gonna tell you that. Uh, that uh, three inch, when you hit the throttle, it screams up in the air on a three S. I can't even imagine what it might do on a, on a four S. Uh, but this this drone, you know, my Tyro seventy nine turned out to be a Tyro one seventy five. I made it. I told you that the last time. By the time, <laughs> yeah. by the time I took my seventy nine dollar drone and put fifty five dollars worth of new motors on it and mm -hmm. uh, and a thirty five dollar new camera on it and put the receiver in it. I was at 175 bucks, but it's it, pretty stable and steady. And oh, and it, it just flies. No it flies. Or anything. No, it flies beautifully. No, no jello. I haven't yeah. adjusted the camera yet for contrast or anything. That's just all stock, uh, stock settings, but, uh, it's a fast little thing and it's, and, it, and, and it's just on three S here goes a loop. Oh God. I love that. What receiver do you use on the market is, uh, RDFTV's question. On the marmot, I, on the marmot, I, I, I'm using an R9, uh, min, not a mini, the little tiny one, the, 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 the R9MM or something. It, it, it's the long range, 900 megahertz, and I've got the when I bought the when I bought the, my Tyrannus, I bought the S, the Q7S instead of just the Q7, and it came with the R9 transmitter module, which snaps in the back, which gives you uh, long range. They say uh, 10 kilometers or better. Uh, and the receivers cost the same 20, 20, 22 bucks. Uh, and they got a T antenna sticking out the back. And on the marmot here, um, on the marmot, you, see, you can see in the back right here is, is the antenna. It's a T. See it? Yep. And uh, it just sticks right out the back underneath the uh, VTX antenna there. And uh, when I fly this thing, the thing hardly ever moves off a of 99% RSI. It's just a uh, monster. Um, not that I uh, really built it to do long range stuff because where do you fly long range, you know, and, and legally or whatever. But uh, uh, I like the option of being able to fly and not worry about running out of range. And this has got an 800 milliwatt transmitter in it, which really, when you turn it up all the way, it really gives you great signal. So let me uh, let me show you guys. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug I'm gonna plug the quad in here to uh, to my serial port and hope that I, I hope I don't knock out all my cameras doing this. Let me plug it in. There we go. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna go over here to uh, to this monitor over here uh, and uh, open up uh, this BL Heli 
32 and uh, it connect. At, okay, so I'm not on COM3. Let's see what COM port I'm on. So I'll open up Betaflight here. I'm on COM8. Okay, so I'm on COM8. So let's go back to this and let's go to COM8 and connect. Okay, there we go. And read setup. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I, that's what I was afraid of. It's, it's, it's not going to read it. There's just too much going on with the US, with the USB, with the USB port on this thing. So I think uh, I'm not going to fool with it. But basically, what I had to do was I had to go in there. And I had to, uh, I had to uh, reverse motors three and motors four. So now all the oh, motors. So you got are, two out of four. Uh, yeah, right. I told you, it's 50, that's 50. Not so bad. Yeah, that's two out of four. You know, else. some guys I saw, you know, they they you got a 50 50 shot and they get all of them. They get all of them wrong. <laughs> oh, that's right, you, Austin. You do have to have the battery plugged in. Okay, let's go back, man. I'm glad I got some experts here. So let me uh, let me plug it back into. That's right, because the ESCs don't get power. So let me go back and plug in the actual the actual quad, and let's go back to uh, to this, and let's uh, load that up again, and COM eight connect, and let's read the setup. Hey, thank you, Austin. Man, I'll tell you, Austin's my hero. He, uh, oh, seriously, man, he, he's, he's, he's the one that showed me that my favorite trick, which I'm going to show you here on this thing. So oh, anyway, yeah, this, this, this yeah. is okay. So ESC one and two was motor one and two were, were, were okay. And you can see it says motor direction normal. And if I go into, into ESC two, that says normal. But if I go to ESC three, that says reversed right there because that's where you'd reverse it right there. And then ESC four is also reversed. And then after you get all done, you'd write the setup back to the quad and it'll reboot. And then, uh, and then you're done. So I'm going to disconnect and it, it goes and reboots the flight controller and I'm going to, um buzzer. yeah, I'm going <laughs> to unplug the battery from it and I'm going to hit the buzzer for, for a couple seconds here. Okay, and unplug the unplug the uh, the quad from the uh, from the computer because I don't want it. It really does heat up. Um, it heats up the VTX, you said, right? Oh, it heats up everything. The, the actual oh, really? F seven chip in that thing just is is so, so powerful, and uh, that they suggest that if you're going to ha have it on the bench for you know anything anything over a few minutes, to put a fan in front of it to blow air over it. Okay, so that's that's basically what I was trying to do the other night, but I was trying to do it with with the, with the BL Heli configurator, which doesn't seem to handle the uh, uh, BL Heli 32, uh, which is the latest uh, um, version of BL Heli, and and since this is like the latest flight controller, these these uh, ESCs do do use BL Heli 32. Uh, RD, which what receiver are you running in the Marmot? Okay, I answered that already. I totally yeah, have the battery. You're cut up. I got you. Uh, yeah, I buy a uh, BC. I buy a lot of stuff from uh, um, from <laughs> from uh, Get FPV. But uh, uh, if you ever, you know, they have a phone number, but you, you never, they never. You can't talk to anybody. And I, I had an email. I, I ordered something from him that's back ordered. So I sent him an email this morning to, uh, uh, you know, where is it? And I, and I haven't gotten, it takes him 24 hours to respond to that. So uh, I like race day quad seems to be uh, a little more on the ball, getting, getting stuff out quick. And, uh, but, you know, between the two of them, they, they usually have it. But I got to tell you, if Amazon has it, and it's about the same price. I'll buy it from Amazon. I usually get it the next day, and the return policies are, you know, no questions asked. It's it's uh, it, it's terrific. So at any rate, let's uh, let me plug this thing in again without the battery this time. To just go into uh, plug it in. I'm going to go over to uh, 
to that screen again, stick myself down in the bottom, and I'm gonna open up Betaflight. And uh, I wanna connect to the quad. Now, one thing I already did was I, 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 I took a big coffee cup and took a level and leveled it in both directions. In fact, I took, I took this big coffee cup right here. It's a big one. And I leveled it in, in both directions and then set the quad right down on it perfectly level and, uh, and then hit calibrate the accelerometer. Uh, it was, if you look at the quad there, it was a little bit off kind of like this before I calibrated it. But when I hit calibrate, it just did that. And uh, that means that when you put it in stabilized mode, it's probably not going to drift too much. But if it shows sitting like this when you first go in, uh, and that's what the accelerometer thinks level is, uh, you, need to, you need to do that. So that's the first thing I did was, uh, was calibrated the accel accelerometer. And that's really about all you can do on this, on this first uh, setup page. The ports page... Here, I've got everything hooked to this thing. And so I had to, I kind of made a cheat sheet here um, up top with all the, where I had the different ports. And uh, the uh, port one, UART one, is where the uh, receiver is hooked to. That's where the receiver pad on the solder to is goes US one. So you turn on the serial RX switch. One thing in Betaflight you want to be careful of is this USB VCP. Don't ever turn that off because if you do, you'll never be, you won't be able to communicate with your drone anymore with the computer unless you reflash the whole thing. So that's something you got to be careful of. So you are one is uh, at serial RX. It says serial RX there. You uh, are two is dedicated to the ESC telemetry, which is where the ESCs tell the flight controller uh, what's what voltage, how much current is being drawn, uh, and that can com that communicates that information over over UART two. So over here on UART two, you have different columns that that show you. One of them says telemetry output. One of them says uh, sensor input, and the final one says peripherals. So this is a sensor, the ESC sensor. So on UR2, out of this drop down right here, you have disabled GPS and ESC. I selected ESC. Uh, UR3, I used for my smart audio. So basically, what's happening is uh, a signal is being sent from the flight controller to the video transmitter that allows it to, to control. So you, you would hook it to the TX pad of UR3, TX3 on the controller board, and uh, because it's going to transmit out from the controller board to the VTX, and that's how I can set, uh, how it can automatically set the power when I arm it. Uh, it's how I can go in through the through the OSD and the goggles and change channels and, and do all that other good stuff. Now, that's not the camera control to uh, control the uh, uh, settings of the camera. This is the VTX, the transmitter control. So that's what I got on UART 3. And over here, it says peripherals. And in this box, you have a, a, a drop down to select uh, black box logging, VTX, TBS, smart audio, tramp. Uh, and also, if it is camera control, you select camera control there. Yeah, so I so quick it, interruption. Drone up says Jerry joined us. Oh, hey, Jerry. How are you? Someone else just the tank. Chris person. Hope. Hey, Chris Hope's in the house. Hi, Chris. Oh, he wasn't good here to begin with. He said he's not, you. he's not by you there, uh, oh, Carlos. Sorry. You're not paying I attention. I thought he was here before. Chris? No, I didn't see Chris before. He just kind of came and, in. And the tank that was RC Gary. Was, Gary us. was here before. The tank RC. Hey, how you doing? I apologize. I'm slack. So anyway, I got on uh, <laughs> on UART three. I have the uh, uh, Tramp uh, VTX control, like smart audio. Uh, on UART 4, I have the, there's a receive and transmit wire coming out of the camera. And I hook them up to the opposite receive and transmit pads on TX4 on the flight controller. And then I went to 
uh, peripherals and set that to camera control. And it has one that says run cam and run cam, I think designed the protocol for the camera control. So uh, most of them will use that. UART five is uh, the telemetry from my RXSR receiver. Uh, and basically it sends telemetry from the flight controller to the receiver. So you hook the uh, smart port line on the receiver up to uh, the transmit on UART5, and then you go into telemetry outputs and set it to smart port, and that works. Now, it may sound like I know what the hell I'm doing, <laughs> but one of the reasons that, that I didn't want to do all this setup and all that other stuff live was that... Um, was that uh, experimenting? I had to watch videos. I had to read instructions, dig into the internet, try to make sure I had everything right. It took me hours and hours and hours, and and I did mostly most of the same stuff with the marmot. But you know, you you don't re you don't really remember, uh, you don't really remember all the fine points of it. I guess if you're Joshua Bardwell and you do it five times a day, you do remember it. And the more I do it, the more familiar I'm, I'm getting with it. But so I got Mitch, I got real quick when you say you are is that almost another way of saying channel? Yeah, you are is a serial port is, is serial input output. Uh, okay. uh, it means uh, universal and the a means ace Oh, universe. You ready for this? Now I'm going to show you how, uh -oh. how, how, how trivia it means universal asynchronous receive and transmit. <laughs> I'll never remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me how I remembered that, but that's what UART means. And it, 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 it's a serial port. And uh, the uh, uh, these F7 controllers have, a, you know, six or seven of them. And if you're going to hook all this stuff up, you got to have, you got to have all these different serial, you know, UARTs. And then, uh, so I have that, I have uh, that set here on the telemetry to smart port, which is the, the setting that you need for the uh, RXSR, uh, even though there is a setting here that says FR Sky, that's not the one you use. You want to use the smart port. And UART 6 is where the GPS will go. So after I get the GPS wired in there, on UART 6, I'll go over here to sensor input, and I will select GPS here. And then there'll be pages of, there'll be a whole page of settings for the GPS, what protocol it's using and, and, and everything else. Uh, and, and then how you want to, you know, then you have to go in and set up your GPS rescue and, and how you want the quad to interact with the, with the GPS. But that's the, that's the ports tab. So that all works. All the, all those stuff works in there. Uh, configuration tab. Uh, one of the thing that I, that I forgot to set is the arming angle. You want to always set that to 180. Uh, and the reason you want to set that to 180 is, uh, if you end up in a tree or flipped over, you do want to be able to arm the quad. You want to, you definitely want to be able to start those motors. And if the arming angle is only set to 25, if that thing is more than 25 degrees out of level, it won't let you arm. So uh, that's, that's going to be the, the first thing you want to, you want to change in here. Um, this is right. Now, this is the settings that it came with. And, and you would assume that these controllers come with a flash of beta flight that have the proper settings. And the pit loop frequency here is 2K. The gyro update is 8K. I've seen a lot of people say change this to 8K. Uh, it works, you know, for the kind of flying I'm doing, uh, I don't need to be all that aggressive. And 2K uses less processor power than 8K does. So I'm just going to leave it at 2 uh, if, until I find out a good reason to change it to, eight, uh, to 8K. Accelerometer. Just dropped in. Just, you know, Brent, not me. Oh, hey, Brent. How are you? Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, the accelerometer, it does have an accelerometer. So I turn that on. I don't have a, a, a magnetometer or barometer. Turn that off. Here's where you put the name, the name of the, of the quad. I put the camera angle in here at 22 degrees. I don't know if he, that's even necessary, but I'm sure it, it figures somehow into the, uh, into the uh, equation. The receiver is a, is a serial based receiver with S S bus protocol, and uh, I don't do th need three D stuff. And my RSSI is coming in on a receiver channel, not not on a dedicated line. And that's a, the way you do that is if you have you have you have telemetry, 
uh, from your receiver and it's sending back to the transmitter what the RSSI is and you basically take a, an unused channel and in my case I use channel channel 12 and mix the uh, mix the RSSI signal in with it and uh, uh, the quad, the, the receiver receives it and it can display it on the goggles. And that, that, that's, there's any number of ways to display, you know, relative signal strength. Uh, uh, but I think it's an important thing to see in your goggles. So, you know, whether, uh, whether you're flying close to out of range or you're not ready to fail safe or not. Um, so down here, it says other, other features, uh, the soft serial was on. I don't know why, because I'm not using it, but it won't hurt anything. Telemetry, because I have a telemetry, I am using it. I did turn that on. I don't have an LED. I don't need any of this other stuff. I do have an on-screen display. I got anti-gravity and dynamic filter turned on, and that takes care of that. And then you go down to the Mitch, beeper. Quick, quick interruption. Austin yeah. Powers, because I know you take these. Uh, he says the camera angle setting should be half your actual camera angle. Oh, okay. Mixes Thank you. Your, it says mixes your and roll while flying for smoother maneuvers. Oh, okay. So what I'll do is I'll put it at uh, I'll put it at fifteen. Thank you. Now down here they have a thing called D shot beacon. Now what what that that's a beeper. You know when you plug a battery and you hear all the beep beep beeps. Well, those are the motors. They 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 they, they actually send alternating signals to the motors and it makes them vibrate and make that noise and. A lot of times, if you don't have a dedicated beeper, that's the only thing you got on a quad. So you can actually set that if you want to use it so that it'll beep if the thing loses its signal. Uh, it says here, beeps when the transmitter is turned off or signal uh, is lost. And then uh, the RX set means that if you have a switch set on your transmitter to make it beep, it'll do that. But... I don't need that beeping because I have the, uh, the dedicated beeper. And then these things all come turned on and you don't realize how annoying it is until you have a loud beeper in there because there's times you just don't want the thing to beep. So I have it turned on for RX lost or X lost landing where the transmitter can control it when it's ready to go, uh, when the system initializes and when, uh, when it's flipped over in a crash. And that's the only time I don't, I, I, when it came, it had the beeping whenever a USB was plugged in. So anytime you plugged it in to do any work on it, you got to start beeping. It was a pain, pain in the neck. So, so that's the, uh, uh, that's the uh, uh, configuration page. Power and battery, uh, minimum cell voltage, maximum warning cell voltage, personal preferences there. Uh, PID tuning, I haven't screwed with it yet. The rates, these are the standard, these are the stock rates that it comes with, and uh, I'll, I'll fly it first. Okay. It'll fly for sure. Uh, if the throttle has a real hot spot down at the bottom, you might want to put a little curve, uh, level out, you know, little expo in the throttle curve. There's all kinds of, and this is the same kind of thing you do it with RC airplanes. It, uh, adjust the overall uh, response and then the exponential where you smooth out, smooth it out towards the center. But I'm not going to fool with that. It does have I-term rotation turned on. It came that way. Uh, it doesn't have I-term relax, smart feed forward or any of that. So I'm going to start off with it with the standard settings that it came with. And like I say, I'm not enough of an expert to even know if I'm doing it right. Now, the receiver pad... Um, I'm not going to get into setting up the receiver. That's the same for any for any quad. Uh, but I do have on aux six. Oh, it's, I'm sorry. It was channel ten. Aux six up here in the corner it says RSSI channel. And when the radio is on, uh, in fact, let me. In order for to power, to power the receiver, I got to plug the quad in. So let me plug the quad in. Turn my transmitter on here, and you'll you'll see. You'll see that the. Uh, this brown one here, see it moving around? That's mm -hmm. the uh, aux six. So that's the RSSI signal being sent from the transmitter on on that particular channel back to the to the receiver, so that when I have the goggles going, it'll show me in the goggles and on the and on the transmitter itself, it'll show me uh, what my RSSI 
signal is. The rest of these things uh, are just, the, the, this is the auxiliary one is uh, arm. Makes a lot of noise when you do that. Auxiliary two is mode for uh, angle or acro. Uh, auxiliary three is the beeper. Uh, aux four We're is talking about your switches. Yeah, aux four is is for turtle mode. And remember, I had it set to beep when it was in turtle mode. Wow. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and aux six aux six is set up uh, to transmit the RSSI back. And that's that's pretty much the receiver. I did have to change the order. It came A E T R, and most of the time I have to change it to T A E R. Uh, and you can always tell if this little quad down here is spinning around when you first plug it in. If it's doing this, then you know those things are back are wrong. But you can see you can see here. You can actually try your radio and see what your roll rate. So there's my maximum roll rate. There's this is uh, my maximum flip rate. And uh, this is going to be uh, your maximum yaw rate, which is plenty fast enough, you know. <laughs> so that's the uh, that's the receiver tab. Uh, yaw is the, tricky because yaw is the same as throttle, same stick. Yeah, yaw is on the same stick. Yeah. Now the modes tab is where you set up all the uh, all the switches. So I've got aux one to arm, and the way this works is there's a little dot here. I'll use the angle tab here. Uh, when I click aux two, you see that 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 went off. It it moved it moved up here. If I click it all the way, it goes to the end here. But anything if it's not in angle mode, then it's in acro mode. Okay. And so no stability I have, at all. Yeah, I have no use for horizon mode, so I didn't bother setting it up. Oh, okay. Oh, so angle and stability is the same? Basically? Yeah, angle is a stu okay. stability mode. The beeper here is, I set it up, the beeper on aux three, and there's the off position, and you move these things around. So in other words, if I wanted if I wanted the beeper to come on when it was in the center, it would be there. But I want it to be all the way at the at the far extreme, so when I, when I click that, the beeper comes on, see? Uh, air so mode. It's, it's fair to say... Uh, up is all the way to the right and down switch is all the way to the left. Correct. Correct. Now air mode is uh, something that keeps the motor spun up when you pull the throttle down and you want that when you're flying acro, but you don't want it in stability mode. So basically when, when aux two is in stability mode, the air mode is off. When aux two is in acro mode, air mode is on in either of these positions. So it doesn't matter whether I have it in center or all the way it's, it's, it's in acro mode. Uh, flip over after crash, same way. When I when I click that switch, it goes into flip over, and I can I can. That's called turtle mode, and that's all the modes. So that uh, that's how you set up the modes. The motors we already did full with those. The on screen display is pretty self explanatory. You you just pick out the uh, the values that you want, like RSSI, and let's suppose I wanted to add main battery voltage. Well, if I click on that it'll stick it'll stick it here and then i just move it wherever i want it on the on the on the display and that's what my, hold, my on-screen display drag, will look like drag and hold yeah you just hold it drag it wherever you want it and you can customize these displays how, however you want i don't use main battery voltage i use average cell voltage it's easier for me to not have to think about whether i got a two cell three cell or four cell i i, I know that the, the average battery voltage is is going to be, uh, if it gets to be 3.5, it's getting a little low, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, but you can also so. put in all of these different things you can put in there, including all this telemetry information, the home arrow, home distance from home, if you have GPS. So I'll probably put some of the GPS stuff up at the, up at the top. But that's uh, that's the, uh, that's it. Now, the, the CLI is called Command Line Interface. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the power from this thing so it doesn't get too hot. Ah, I feel like it's getting too hot. And turn my receiver off. And the beeper. And push my beeper. Right. Hang on, I will do that. One, two. Okay. So the command line interface, uh, you type in version, and it tells you that this is... Uh, a Mamba F7 beta flight 3.5.5. It gives you the version. Uh, you can you can uh, 
for example, if I, when I went, when I followed Austin's lead here and uh, set it up so that the arm switch would actually increase the power of my video transmitter, which is a great thing because you want high power when you're flying, but you don't want the thing to burn itself up sitting on the ground, putting out 800 watts. So you can type a command down here that says uh, get VTX. And what it does is it shows you any command in here. And there's tons of commands, all kinds of commands. You could uh, PID commands and, and, and everything. But this just pulls just the ones that have VTX in it. And this tells me that I can, uh, uh, what the VTX band is going to default to, what the channel is going to default to. Now, I have VTX power equals three which is what I want when I'm flying. But there's a, uh, a setting here that says VTX low power disarm, and it defaults to off, but I have it set to on. And that means that when the quad is disarmed, regardless of what the power setting I mm -hmm. set it to, it uh, will default, go to low power when you disarm. And the way you make these changes is you take this command and you put the word down in the command line, you just type set VTX temp power e disarm equals on and hit enter, and that'll make the change. And then before you before you leave, you type the word save, and then it writes all those changes that you made to the flight controller. So that's that's how I that's how I followed Austin's directions to uh, to do that. And that's that's a that's a pretty neat little pretty neat little deal. And that's the basic. Uh, the basic beta flight setup. <laughs> that, basic. Um, yeah. Imagine uh, involved. It, it is involved, and and yet it, it's understandable once well, once I know, you start. But when you said it's basic with all that you did. <laughs> <laughs> I can't yeah, imagine yeah, we're involved. talking. You know, I used to have hair before I started this. You know. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, that's the uh, that's the beta flight that's the beta flight setup on this little quad and. Um, R.C. Morris is leaving. This. Uh, yeah, oh, okay, my friend. BC, thanks. 6 p.m. here, dinner time. Yeah. Uh, let me take a look at the chat. You don't want to put a cam angle in there, Mitch. It will do weird stuff to the yaw when you are at an angle. Ah. Okay, so uh, I've got Austin says camera angle should be half. EBR says I don't want to put. I, I imagine that if you're doing trying to do some really, you know, nice things like uh, uh, inverted, yaw, inverted yaw turns or that kind of stuff that, you know, maybe they, that would screw you up. I don't know. I, I'm not that experienced a flyer where it's probably going to make any difference to me. So, uh, oh, Austin says that's why it's half. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll leave it set the way it is because I don't, because I don't feel like going back in there and, and, and doing it again. Um here, let me. There you go. We got your. Oh, okay. We got your feet now. I right, put it back. So oh, you. I'm should, sorry. I'm sorry. It's all right. No, it's cool. That's cool. Here. <laughs> I'm reading the uh, the chat. And the chat. <laughs> I'm so to be Ed McMahon. That's all. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, that's the uh, that's the deal. How long before we actually see it in the air? Tomorrow? Oh, no, yeah. Next if next it's warm if, day, a uh, cool day. No, I, oh, it's warm all the No, I mean if it's not raining tomorrow morning, I want to take it out and uh, and just do my line of sight thing, but right by my house, like I did with mm -hmm. like I did with the tie rope. Uh, put the uh, GoPro on my head. I have you know on uh, got this uh, hat hat cam. Yeah, this thing. You know, you oh, just, that, okay. just put it on your head. I can't put it over, and it sits up there on top of your hat and uh, looks right at the. Uh, and and then I, I use. You can see on your cell phone what the camera's seeing through the Wi-Fi. So, I, I, get my cell phone and I look around, make sure it's looking where I'm looking, and. Uh, you don't uh, take that screen uh, that with the shade and a tripod also. Like no, not while well, not not for some stupid little thing like well, this. And and the other morning when I flew. How do you know when your battery's done? How do you know not to go too low on the battery? How would you? Oh, it's not that. I'm only out there for ten minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, uh, the thing will shut off if it gets, uh, if it gets too low. But uh, no, it, uh, gonna, gonna do that tomorrow. I, I can't think. 
of anything that I forgot. And that's what I've been trying to think of is what did I forget? Did I forget anything? Um, but this is a, you know, this is a $26 frame on Amazon, this agro brat. And I got to tell you, uh, if I wanted to put, have you seen that Tarsier, the Cadex Tarsier camera that has the two cameras in one? I've heard of it. One of them records 4K, the other is an FPV camera. And uh, and it has a two, little two board stack so that and it has an SD card in it. And uh, from what I've seen, it does really nice, uh, nice high Will depth. It It'll fit here, but I won't. Then I won't have room for the beeper. I could put the stacks oh, okay. for, for that camera under here, but then I would I'd lose the beeper. Uh, and I might I might do that. I I have one coming. Uh, I ordered one because uh, I I might uh, want to put that on on as opposed to mounting a GoPro on top like so many people do. These it, it's it's uh, I think it's it's so much nicer to actually have the uh, have the uh, camera mounted uh, in the quad itself right. uh, now it's you know if you've got it better you know it's it is you got to be careful you know because you can get you can get you can get gel uh austin is right i want to keep it simple do things yourself at the sticks oh <laughs> yeah yeah that that's uh uh yeah, if you try to put too many too many automatic things, in other words, if you try to uh, couple yaw with roll, you know, that's great if you're just flying around, and it you know it means when you make a, a slow turn, you don't have to add, you don't have to yaw; it'll do it for you. But when you're when you're out there doing rolls and loops and all kinds of other things, you don't want that. You don't want you, you know you want to be able to do the yaw well, without the roll. Yeah, you want to be able to uh, fly it yourself, and it's, the same thing is true for for airplanes. Ah, so wonder where everybody is tonight. I uh, I thought that uh, I think they started to eat some of them. Maybe, and maybe. Yeah, we got, it says there I got six people watching. I didn't know how many. You know, these impromptu things. I don't know how many people I'm going to get, but uh, I did. I did want to come. I did want to come on, and uh, and uh, show you guys what I've been busy doing and uh, the finished product. And tomorrow tomorrow morning, uh, I'll I'll probably take this out alongside the house and uh who knows maybe i'll even do an fpv flight with it if the, if the weather's nice i find some place uh the place that i fly an industrial park i've been doing doing that on sundays when nobody's around so uh we'll what see what morning's like by you 75 to 80 yeah 75 80 it, 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 anytime I, i've got a nice place i could go fly it uh no it's just know, as far as comfort the temperature yeah, the, the heat doesn't bother me. Um, I've oh, been no. in Flo I've been in Florida since 1970, so the, wow. Yeah, the heat doesn't bother me at all. Uh, so anyway, um, I think that I don't know what else I what else I got to tell you. Uh, I, I wanted to at least uh, it, for you anybody. Show us the props you plan on putting on? Yeah, yeah. Hang on a second. Show us, right? Enter, entertain the people. I'll be right back. Da, 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 da. No, I'm not <laughs> entertain. I'm not that entertaining. EBR Austin Powers. Where's Austin Powers from? I'm going to subscribe to Austin Powers. Can I say that I'm live? Coming back. All right. Oh, in Canada, Saskatchewan. Uh, thirty fifty two dash three, whatever that means. Two left, two right. These are the props. The gem fan. I think fifty two is the pitch. That's what I've been learning. The second two numbers. Yeah, three zero is probably three inch. Anybody in the chat? Help me out here. Uh, 30 and then 52 with the pitch. 30, 30, 52. Uh, you know, I should know this. Um, but, uh, Mitch, in all your flights that you've flown thus far, as they say, have you broken any props? 
Um, you know, I hate to admit it. I hate to admit that I haven't, but I haven't, and that okay. means I'm probably not flying flying hard enough. You know, nah, <laughs> or not. I, I, I have mixed feelings about it if you're not crashing. Uh, you're not I hard broke. Uh, I did. I did. Yeah, trying to. I, I had them on there too tight. The problem is I had nothing to hold the motors, and I was. And these props are these little three inch props are not really uh, all that. Um, they're, they're pretty flimsy and by holding on to the prop with a rag, trying to loosen them up, trying to get them off the Tyro 99, I ended up breaking all the props. <laughs> oh. Oh, so wow. I just, so I just threw away the old motors, the original motors, threw them away with the, with the broken props on them. <laughs> but yeah. these are, the, these are the, uh, these are what the props look like. This is a, this is a clear. They were like 12 bucks for four sets of them. So they're certainly cheap enough, you know? 16 propellers for $12, but they have a nice little uh, trailing edge, a little curved down prop tip. They're very, very flexible though. So uh, that's uh, that's the prop that uh, that's going to go on that thing. And uh, are most props millimeter metric rather, right? I'm sure they are. Yeah, everything everything from China is they. They, you know, they, they pretty have, they pretty much have the same, same standard. I think it's like eight millimeter. Is it an eight millimeter shaft? Uh, no, it doesn't look that big. Is that your phone buzzing or mine? It could be mine because I'm getting texts. Oh yeah. Okay. It's not making uh, any noise though. It might be you. No, I hear it go. Bzzz. Yeah. Because you've got it sitting on a table. So that's okay. I just, you hear these noises. You want to know where they're coming from, you know? <laughs> It's all in your head. Okay, you are right. Thirty <laughs> plus three pitch. inches. Fifty-three equals pitch. So is that is that like fifty-three millimeter pitch? No, angle, like 45, 35, 53. I always thought they 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 should the pitch was in was not an angle, but how far it screws in one resolution, one revolution. You understand what I'm uh, saying? Yeah, in yeah, other yeah. words, if you I'm took a prop there. and turned it one time in a, in a, in a median that didn't move, how far would it move in one revolution? And I think that 53 might be 53 millimeters, five centimeters. One revolution will get you get you that far. Now, I may be wrong. I, you know, it, it, it there's pitch. so much. Well, they're saying pitch, and pitch is related to angle, right? Yeah, that's right, how far it will go. Yeah, oh, really? I mean, oh, okay. it's a measurement of the, that is a, is is a function of the pitch. I see. The steeper the pitch, the more pull, the more it's going to happen. I think that's ah, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. they. Right. I mean, boat propellers, sense. boat propellers are, are are the same way. You know, a boat so propeller the size it tells you how far, how much water it goes through in one revolution. But uh, uh, there's so much. God, you know, when when inches, when not millimeters. What's that? He says fifty-three inches, not millimeters. 53 inches in one revolution? No, can't do that. It's, uh, well, yeah, you'd be surprised. Uh, that's a, that's a, that's if you go 100 feet, miles an hour, how many feet per yeah, second? Let's see. Uh, FPV <laughs> prop measurement. If all else fails, Google it. About propellers. Okay, here, here we go. FPV propellers are the key component that keeps your multi-rotor in the sky. Now, God, there's uh. a flash. There's a flash. <laughs> they have the most direct uh, or lifetime multi They're likely to add up to the biggest investment you make to keep flying. They are also going to be the component that is damaged and replaced most often. Hmm. Taking time to choose the right propeller. There are five main variables that need to be considered when choosing a multi-rotor prop. Size, pitch, blade configuration, material, and design. The first thing to understand about it is that all the above variables are interlinked and everything is a compromise, a common multi-rotor system, blah, 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 blah. Tell me what they mean. Okay, propellers are commonly described using a series of numbers <coughs> separated by an X that relate to size, pitch, and blade configuration. For instance, you may see a propeller being described as a 5 by 4.3 by 3. All right, so this one is a 3052-3. Uh, that's different. Okay. Uh, the first number corresponds to a size, 5 inches. The second to the pitch. 
4.3 inches in this case. So it's inches. Inches, it, 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 it would be 5.3 5 5 uh, inches, not 53 inches, right, Austin? 5.3 inches. And then the third, the number of blades. Ah, okay. So that's a three-bladed or four-bladed prop. That makes sense. Uh, the first thing is uh, to do, do, do. Hey, okay. I wouldn't, like I say, I wouldn't know which is the right prop or the wrong prop. Uh, I do on model airplanes. I, 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 I've been doing that long enough to know what a 12.8 is or whether a 12.8 is too much prop for a certain motor or not enough prop. And uh, I, I guess, I guess that's, I have to learn that with drones as well. So uh, thank you, Get, P Get FPV website, for that terrific information. What I was saying, uh, Carlos, is that um, what when you first start out in, in this, you, 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 with Mavics, you don't have to know all of this stuff, really. You, know? yep. with, you just have to know how to work the Go4 app, which is complicated yep. enough. But you don't you don't build them. You don't have to deal with with all of this. So and you get into FPV, um, and between the electronics and the, the computer aspects of the flight controller and the serial communications and and and, and all the ports and the, the ESCs and and their programming and flashing firmware and everything and the different kinds of receivers. Uh, not not and to mention not to mention learning how to fly. <laughs> these things the and which goggles yeah. it, it is a very very uh complicated Involved. hobby but it's it's, it's tremendous tremendously interesting and, and and uh and that's what a hobby should be um one of the things i yeah. i used to love about the rc hobby was was building i've said that before bit workshop time craft time hobby time and i missed mm. that with the dji drones because you know you just you just fly, and in the in, believe me, in the RC hobby, you're you're building to flying times a hundred to one. For every yeah. hour you spend flying, you spend a hundred hours tinkering, See, building, yeah. and FPV is almost the same way, uh, unless you're EBR and fly fifty flights a day. <laughs> uh, I. Uh, uh, and I enjoy the. I that's why I decided that for me. Uh, really trying to dive, even as, as new as I am at this, trying to really dive into the mechanics of it and the electronics of it and, and, and the programming of it and learn all this stuff is what is what that turns you on. Yeah, it fascinates me. So to speak. Because I'm, I'm the kind of guy that buys the car. I don't, you know, as long as I know it, it's going to get me from A to B and I don't need to know the mechanics where you would probably like to know even the mechanics. You understand what I'm saying? Sort of. Oh, oh absolutely. Get, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I but I mean, I car, put gas in it and go. Yeah, uh, and, <laughs> and I'm that way with cars. I've never had the uh, uh, motorcycles I like to tinker with, but I've never had the desire to tinker with cars for some reason. I've always right. liked it. I like you need the, the right tools, tools also. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, uh, uh, it's a great. It's just a, a, a great hobby, and I I, I thought that uh, you know I don't know how successful this building drones live stream stuff is if people if people uh get anything out of it or, or whatever i know i learned i, I learned about props <laughs> yeah and, 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 and like that uh, it, it's it's just a uh you know i built this whole i got this whole live stream set up and i, I have to find excuses to use it <laughs> uh, <laughs> as well. just other than, other than just our, what is it Wednesday's or Thursday? Thursday, Thursday, Thursday night. Thursday. Yeah, yeah. So this is a new first for me. I have three, three live streams in a, in a week because I started to build on last Thursday's live stream. And uh, uh, I think you should build more and eventually get so many that you want to sell them. To. Well, you know, it's funny <laughs> that uh, you know my my daughter said that to me. She she came. She was here over the Fourth of July weekend visiting from Tampa with her family. Because my son lives over here, so they all came over to spend Fourth of July together, and uh, he uh, here may as well have some flying going on behind me instead of just a brick wall and a monkey. Um, the uh, uh, that's actually a smooth uh, a smooth power. 
Luke. That was, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 And uh, get up you high and see, then you don't you have don't to worry. See sticks uh, jump at all or anything. Looks well, good. I was a pretty smooth pilot in RC and, you know, flying those kind of maneuvers is, is in a lot of respects, similar to flying RC aerobatics. Um, mm -hmm. uh, did you ever see, did you ever see that video uh, of, of me flying that turbine uh, uh, F100D? The one that jet you landed, fighter? Right? Yeah. Oh, I don't know about a jet fighter, but I know you, you recently played, played one when you said it went up to hundred miles an hour. No, that was a that was a little uh, that was just a little um, uh, just a little foamy thing, you know, a little foam. Says, Jerry says I've been building drones for a while, but I still learn every time I watch. I love watching you and hearing your ex experiences. Thanks. Oh man, Jerry, that means a lot. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, because I'm not. <laughs> I I joke about it. I say. I say, I'm so new at this, I don't even know what I don't know yet. You know, pretty soon I'll learn what I don't know, and then I can go about learning that. But uh, every time you turn around in this hobby, uh, and and you're involved in teaching kids this stuff, you, you know, it it is, uh, it's an adventure. Uh, and just when you think maybe you got something figured out, you get you get something thrown at you from left field. That uh, That's all different. Let me, let me uh, see if... Yeah. What's looking that? at that picture, you were facing up high. Is that the uh, is that level, and your camera faces that high? Yeah, because I was landing. See, okay. You have to you have to pitch up to land. I I I I I actually I tried to to fly what I thought was like a landing approach. So I turned around to see that green the green strip out there in front of me. Mm -hmm. I I kind of pictured that as a runway. I see. see, and 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 so I started to descend. And then as I got down closer to the ground, I started to pitch up like you would normally flare, but I was, I was, wasn't close enough and I was too high off the ground. So then I continued and came a little closer, but you notice that as I come down towards the ground, uh, I actually flared the nose up a little bit because that's how you land. That's how you land airplanes. And it works. It works with drones. The only problem is if you got a relatively high camera angle, you, 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 all you're looking at is sky sky. And another thing I learned from watching my buddy Joshua Bardwell uh, is that uh, when you land, you know, just just get to where you think you're just about there and uh, disarm it. Right. You don't want props cutting grass. Yeah. Uh, where is that? Where is that thing that, that I was looking for? Hang on a second here. Um, I think I'd have a, a nice file of all these of all these uh, of all these videos. Here we go. It looks like a mosquito this is, uh, the body of water. Oh wow, that's real. That's a RC. Yeah, that's RC. This is a this is a video um, of some of my RC flying that was was. Is that uh, you? Yeah, that's me. Uh, some of my RC flying back <laughs> when I was doing the jets, and we'd go to these meets, and they had a guy uh, who made videos. That was what he did, uh, prop wash productions, and then, and this was back in the old VHS days. And Electrical gas. Yeah. No, turbine. Turbine. Oh, turbine. Right. Gas turbine. Jet A fuel. Uh, and Ooh, and the way I have my OBS set up, you can, I don't think you can hear that. You, you'll be able to hear the audio. I can't. Feed, I don't think did I can you, feed. Did the you audio. paint that yourself as well? What's that? You painted it yourself? Oh, I built them. Yeah, that's all fiberglass and carbon fiber composite. And but I'm saying you we, painted it. As oh, well, we right? painted them. Painted them with automobile that's paint. Really we, all had, we had. We all had. We all had paint paint booths. I mean, we were serious about this stuff. And, and these airplanes, these, these went 200 plus miles an hour. Uh, but that was, uh, let me see if I can actually get some sound going. I can, can you hear the sound? No. Okay. I can hear it in my headphones, but I, I, I let me, let me try something here. Let me stop that and go into my sound in my system sound and let me try to go into apps apps uh app volume the device and go into vlc and go to to this and tell me if you hear it if you hear it now can you hear it nothing 
No. That's a shame because it's got all kinds of jet noises. Let me try. Let me see here. Any flight time on one of these things? About ten, eight, eight minutes, ten minutes. Wow. Let me know if, if it ever starts making any noise. I will. But they, 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 they do sound like, like turbine jets. See, I can hear it in my headphones, but not, uh, it's not, it's not getting in the hangouts because I'm using a mixer here. So I would have to find out, so figure some way of getting the sound into the mixer, but it sounds like a, a, a real fighter jet. And anyway, what I wanted to show you, that was, this is a sport jet here. This is just a, uh, uh, designed for sport flying. But then the, the thing I really liked, there I am, young the young Mitch. Um, the thing that I really liked was the uh, was the scale stuff. So this was a scale model of a uh, a Lockheed 1011 that I built, wow. and uh, it How had much jet fuel. Doesn't use gallon quart. Right. What'd you say? How much jet fuel? A gallon or? Yeah, uh, this one held about three quarters of a gallon, good for about a six, eight minute flight. And uh, the, 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 the nacelles under the wings were dummies, they, they, but the, the, it had one single engine in the fuselage in the back that actually mm -hmm. went, went back uh, and used the uh, air intake was up, up there in the top by the tail and it went out the back. And anyway, this was, uh, this was a, uh, uh, a nice flying how much did it weigh? 10 pounds, 15 pounds? It weighed about 28, 30 pounds, oh, wow. 35 pounds takeoff weight. But it looked like the real deal in the air. And, yeah, and unfortunately, this day that they shot this, was it, it never fails. It was just gusty and bouncy and windy as hell. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, didn't, it didn't look all that smooth. But at any rate, that was, uh, that was a uh, Wait, that was a they thing. didn't get a picture of you landing it? Yeah, they did. I bounced let's, it. Let's see it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, because I bounced it because of the because of the uh, fighting the wind. Because of the, the, it was incredibly. See, you can see it. Look, see, it, it just dropped right out from under me. So yeah, uh, but no, that's a that's considering the we're doing yeah, it, that's pretty good. Couldn't have been smooth, in my opinion. Now this next deal, and again, th these are just uh, digital grabs that I I had these all the stuff on VHS, and I decided that uh, what a shame to maybe lose this stuff. So. So what I did was, you know, because it deteriorates, you know, old mm -hmm. videotapes. So I, I got a, a, a little thing that you go VHS to digital and right. captured some of this stuff. Now, this was uh, this was a Top Gun Invitational Tournament. This is like the, the world's most prestigious RC event. And uh, you have to be this invited. In Florida? Yeah, it's in Florida. You have to be invited to fly, and you have to have a scale airplane that is just the real deal. Uh, and this was an F-100D that I built that uh, took me a year to build this airplane. I mean, everything is is scale to the drawings of a real airplane, a real example of the F-100, all the markings, the, the paint scheme, even every the rivets, to, right down to each rivet on the airplane. And, and this thing had... Uh, actually had leading edge slats that would come out. It had uh, uh, flaps. It, it had brakes on the wheels, retractable landing gear. The canopy would raise, I could raise and lower the canopy with the radio oh, wow. <laughs> and it had speed brakes underneath it that deployed and uh, it weighed over 40 pounds takeoff weight. Uh, takeoff speed. What do you think? 60, 50 miles an hour? At least. Yeah, at least now. On the takeoff roll, you you this was a scale competition, and it, and the F one hundred was a pig. It didn't want to get off the ground. Now I could have pulled it up off the ground much quicker than I did, but I tried to make it. I tried to make it look scale, you know. Tried to make it look like a scale takeoff. And but you're pinching, I see. Oh, I've always been a pincher. Yeah. Even but you now, see, yeah, pinching. Oh yeah, but you yeah. see the, the you see this loop. Look at this loop, and and then a, a roll out at the top. These are 
specified maneuvers. You have 10 maneuvers you have to fly. You have to enter the maneuver at exactly the right spot. You have to fly the maneuver at the right, right placement in front of the judges. And uh, uh, this one coming up here was a military roll where you pitch up 45 degrees, do your roll, level off, and then peel off to the left. And then... Uh, What's a wing over? That's not a... What you just said. Uh, no, wing over is uh, uh, where you, you you pull up and then you kind of yaw over like okay. this, okay. you know, come back down. And again, gusty, windy, wind. oh, terrible. But uh, <laughs> tell me that ain't a cool looking model. <laughs> what was that flap that went down? That was a speed break. Okay. And I won a trophy. I took fifth place in expert class, which is, uh, the, you know, for a guy like me who, who, well, wasn't I mean, really interested. Entered. Not, not interested in competing. Not six people, right? It wasn't six people. No, there was a hundred people entered. <laughs> you you serious. take a trophy in Top Gun, you're a big deal. But I never was a big deal. I, I, I the guy who built the jets, the guy who who made the kits was a friend of mine, and he begged me, please, please, we need some people representing our jets. And I say to him, Bob, I don't. I compete every day in business. I don't compete. You don't see me out there playing golf or tennis or. Or, or entering, I don't compete. Oh, and he talked me into it, talked me into it. So I did it for like five years, the Top Gun thing. And uh, sure it's a lot of it. work and a lot of money. That that airplane was, was uh, uh, I sold that airplane after, you can compete with the same airplane for three years and then you have to, uh, you have to you, you get a different airplane. So after three years of, with that airplane, I never, I never flew it a lot because it was too much money wrapped up in it to go out and play with the thing. You, you practiced for Top Gun and you flew to the contest. So after the third year, I couldn't fly it anymore. Some guy from England, who big modeler guy, big model uh, uh, dealer, uh, one of the biggest in England, you know. And, and all those guys come to the come to the uh, Top Gun tournament, and and he offered me twenty five thousand bucks for it. I said sold. Nice created it up and off to England it went. And I think he's got like a museum over there in, in England. And I think the airplane's in the museum. <laughs> so, wow. but I can't afford to, to do that anymore. That was back when I was working and making money, but it, it, it uh, it's a, it's a great hobby, but it's the kind of flying I like to do. So when, when you see that, when you see me flying the drone like this, instead of doing these guys flipping and making you, making themselves dizzy, going through trees and all that stuff, to me, this is this gives me more pleasure. So why not do this? You know, I always say, do whatever you like, not whatever you think you need to do to impress the other guy. Yep. Uh, I also like low to the ground, so you get that sensation. Of oh speed, yeah, that's that's the quads. Yeah, the way you do that with with your with your little whoops flying around under the trees and all that, and and I I enjoy doing I enjoy doing that in, in my house with with the right. little. Uh, with a little, um, do I do I have a somewhere around here? I got a I got a video of uh, of, of me. I've got all kinds of uh, it's just all all buried in file folders somewhere. So nobody's put anything in the chat for a while. They're listening. Jerry, you Jerry was their, <laughs> <laughs> their attention. Which, their attention. And the. Uh, uh, I was I showed you guys the last time what the original uh what the original Tyro camera looked like the cheap one the, and the vibrating motors and props yeah. so you can see the difference look at that Isn't that horrible yeah. That's what it looked like and you see the difference the difference in in uh they mesmerized us. Yeah, it, it, difference difference in the <laughs> same the same uh, the same drone. Now this one here, this is uh, oh this is my Tyro ninety nine. This is and that's got some Jello in it too. But that was a that was a hundred dollar five inch drone. But th that's out of our model airplane field. That's uh, nah, that's not that's that's not nearly as good as this as this picture from the. With the new pro, with the new motors and the new uh, camera, you think? It's completely stable. It's yeah, new. much much better, much better. Uh, this is uh, this was the the flight of the marmot. 
where I didn't have the video power turned up. I only had the video power to about 25 uh, percent. So it really didn't get that good a picture. Plus, this is the Cat X Turtle, and it's splitting the, the image between the uh, DVR and the uh, uh, and the FPV, and you pay a price with the FPV image. Now you notice up you notice up at the top of this, you see the uh, GPS coordinates. Okay, yeah. And you see the arrow, and yeah, and that points to home, and. Oh, wow. uh, and I uh, got 11 satellites in the air mode and, and down at the bottom, it, 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 the, the bottom is the arrow that points to home is at the bottom. And, uh, but you see, I was dropping that video and it really spooked me because uh, the video would just go away. Now that was the, uh, that was, that's from the, that was the first flight of the marmot. And this is what it looked like from the onboard, the onboard uh, DVR, uh, I see. the CADEX DVR. So this is what it recorded of that same flight. Let me move it forward. Quite a difference, huh? Oh, yeah. Again, this was my first FPV flight with that thing. And uh, that does a nice job, doesn't it? It's a 1080p. 1080p. Uh, really nice. It feels like you're in a plane. It, 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 which is, you know, and the Marmot, this does 1080, but the Marmot does 4K. They, not the Marmot, the, uh, the Tarsier, the new camera, does 4K. So I, uh, uh, I'll throw that on something and play with it. I just need to fly more. I, I don't fly nearly as much uh, as, uh, as you do, or, or certainly as much as uh, EBR. Nobody flies as much as you do. <laughs> Uh, rebuilding EBR is rebuilding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Austin, I'm glad you showed up tonight because uh, I got to tell you, man, you, if you got any any other neat tricks like that VTX power trick, bring it on. I uh, uh, that that's solves one of the greatest problems because you know when you when you go into into the the goggles. And you uh, uh, to, and use the uh, uh, on-screen display controls. You know, moving the transmitter sticks all over the place. It's a pain in the neck. Uh, it's easier than going to the drone and playing with the stupid buttons and hold them in and, and do all that other stuff. But it's still a, a, it's still a pain to uh, to to uh, change the power and to be able to have it automatically. It's one less thing that uh, that you don't forget to do, uh, and I, 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 I said, and at our age, you forget. <laughs> How old are you, Austin? Are you? Is Austin Powers your real name, or is, or are you just a big uh, Mike Myers fan? <laughs> I think he said he was sixty. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm closer to him than you are. How old are you? I'll be 57 in September. 57. Well, we all got a long way to go. Yeah, that room. Let me see. Let's scroll up. <laughs> 61. Oh, just a Mike Myers fan. <laughs> uh, yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. I like his Jaguar. Oh man, I like I like uh, I like the uh, uh, the tent scene lasers. I like lasers. Uh, laser. <laughs> lasers. <laughs> finger in the uh, finger in the mouth. Pinky in the mouth. <laughs> uh, whatever happened to him? You know, I, I haven't seen uh, I haven't seen Mike Myers uh, around oh, much sure. lately. Have you? No. Uh, so what do we got tonight on YouTube? We got, I think we have Bill the Drone Reviewer. Come on at 8 o'clock, does he? He's usually on Tuesday night, isn't he? I tried to get on early again at 6 o'clock so I don't step on anybody. I know that Pusa came on at 7. So much competition, you know? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, I don't know. 
I'm going to keep my mouth shut, but I'd rather see something with substance than spinning wheels. And Yeah, I'm with things. you. I, and I watch less and less of, of, of these, uh, these live streams. Spike's live streaming. Oh, his is entertaining. That's it's always entertaining. fun. And, and, yeah. and I enjoy, I enjoy, but his is about the only one that I actually regularly go on anymore. That, that isn't mm -hmm. mine. I, I, uh, I haven't, uh, been well, how on about the, a grumpy, grumpy, oh, grumpy, grumpy vlogger? Grumpy yeah, yeah. I watch him once once in a while. And, 400, uh, 400 AGL. Yeah, I watch, I watch, I watch yeah, his. I, I saw his video today of him flying his little. Uh, yeah, we had a preview of that. He had a live stream. He had showed us. Oh, did he? Oh, okay. Out. So you That's think he's going to? You think he's going to blow himself out of this FPV, or you think he'll he'll he's, get hooked? It depends the rest how of he it. does with the tiny hook. If he feels like he's because I think. He was still in stability mode. Really? Yeah. No, no. He was in acro. He was in acro mode. No. no really? Yeah. I thought, said, I thought it said. I thought it said. I don't think I, it says it on the tiny book. I, well, I you can put it, anything on the OCD. I think it said air. No, you can No, I don't. I don't believe so. No. I asked him. He said, "No, are you kidding me?" <laughs> was it stability mode? Okay. He's well, I, that's, stability how I, listen, that's how I fly around in, indoors in the stability yeah. mode. I think most You're guys do. The, the second level, the horizon. I tried that, but I don't. You know, I don't want to do flips and all that crap in the house. I'm, no, you don't need. Even just it gives you a little bit more. Yeah, you know, a little bit more pitch. I'll try. I'll try it. Uh, and the I, I, M80, that one, I, I really enjoyed flying that because I could fly that all over the apartment. I still have that. I haven't flown it in a while. You know, that's what happens. You know, I've got the, and then I've got this thing too, which I hardly ever fly anymore. This uh, Beta FPV 85 85X. And, but that's not HD, right? That one. Yeah, that's got the same camera oh, as is. my Mormon. That's got the Turtle uh, Radex oh, Turtle. Wow. Uh, uh, and you don't use it? Not the Radex, the Cadex Turtle. Yeah, I do once in a while, but uh, that the the uh, uh, it's a two inch quad, and the um, eighty five. You know, the the two inch three S capable as well. As yeah, it's three S, and the newer ones. They finally fixed it. They can go to four S, but you don't need it. Three S is plenty. For a two inch, I can't see this. Oh, that's crazy. But the that but, seems like overkill. But the three, but the three inch is is approaching chance, the. Is your tiny hook anywhere near you? Yeah. Can you can you put the tiny hook next to the uh, the uh, beta? I'm just curious as the size difference. Here, hold on. Superman. There you go. Perfect. Let me see. Please. Oh, they're similar. But the weight is, is heavier on the uh oh god, this thing is heavy. This is a this is okay. a, a brick compared to the tiny hawk. And then Did the they still make that one and the beta. the beta. Oh yeah. In fact they've got a new one now, the beta with the 4K version with the Tarsi air camera in it. But now, this have is you flown that beta and crashed it at all? I've never crashed it. I've flown it. I've flown it quite a bit, but uh, and I can even on a two how, on a two okay. cell. I fly it indoors too. Nice. Well, here, let me let me click on me here so it stays. Uh, but but if you look at the if you look at the the beta compared to a three inch, it's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Even with the uh, from prop prop the motor to motor. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's it and the three inches are heavier. They they just they 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 just hang a lot better, you know when you blast when you blast up right, right. And before you do any rolls or, or anything, you, you pull the throttle back because mm -hmm. you don't want to be upside down with full throttle. It's going to pull you back down again. So that that hanging is what I really like. To me, that's that's great fun. Just blast up real high in the air, pull the throttle back, and then just flip and flop around and do all that. And as you come down, then start to bring the throttle back in. And, and Mr. level Powers is saying good night just for the record. Oh, well, we're all going to say good night here pretty soon because it's coming up on it's coming up on two hours, and I got to eat dinner too. Yeah, my stomach is starting to talk. Yeah, but this, uh, like I say, I decided to do this at the last minute. I didn't know if anybody'd show up or not, but I did. You know, we started. Uh, I started off on this thing and showed you all that, and I, and I thought that it, 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 at least it might be interesting if anybody had been following this little. The four or five people that have been following this little series of mine might want to see the see the final thing, and then I'll post a a, a, a line a first line of sight uh, 
And what I'll do on the line of sight video, even though I'm not wearing the goggles, is I'll record the uh, the video from the drone on the goggles too. Um, and maybe if it's if the weather's nice tomorrow, I know it's supposed to dry out here over you know as the weekend comes. Uh, I'll run up to we have a soccer field not too far from here, which is uh, great for three inch. I don't know if I want to. Is it is it Nate, Nate, to find places for you? Not really. Just nah, you know, I, I probably could, I probably could look harder. I got you. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, uh, um, you'd rather go home and build another one. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's wrap it up guys. Uh, all right. Uh, now nah, if Austin's leaving, why bother? You know, <laughs> so EBR, let me say goodbye to everybody. EBR. Thanks for coming in, man. Uh, love your stuff. Uh, I watch I watch some of your flights at, at least every day. Uh, BC Morris, uh, thanks thanks for coming in. And uh, remember, anytime I'm on, any of you guys want to want to come in and uh, a, and and join me on the panel, man, please do so. We can get to know each other a little better, other than just as names on a uh, on a chat room. Jerry, uh, if you're still here, thanks for thanks for coming in. Always always a pleasure. And uh, Conrad, thanks for helping me out. <laughs> I do my best. I appreciate I it. Be here when I can, for sure. Yeah, it's always nice. It's always nice day, having. I, I slept. I, I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah, uh, it's, you know, one or two people. It's it. Well, sometimes if you get six or eight people in there, it's almost too much. But too uh, much. you get a couple, get a couple guys, and uh, and keep it going for a while Shoot until the there's nothing. Have somebody watch out. Until you're all done. Well, listen. Wish me luck on, on flying this thing. I can't. I can't imagine I want to have any problems. And uh, as as, five as in usual, I will uh, uh, disappear with some music. Hey, whatever happened to the Voca people, or the uh, not the Voca people, the uh, the acapella that you were using for a little while? Remember? What, what's that? Remember you had an acapella opening, acapella music. Oh, I got that. Yeah, I got that. Here. That was that's, pretty good. Uh, I like that one. Yeah, I got that. That's that's what I I use that for my videos. Um, let's so see. That, here. I've used that on one of my videos a long time. You use one of my, you use my music on one of your videos? Well, I think I I discovered it before you. I don't think so. <laughs> Definitely. It was last year. I don't even have it on this on this oh, thing okay. here. Oh, okay. But I do have uh Something I, I try to use this one. I like this one here. The Latin, yeah, yeah. Does, right? yeah. It's the body movement. I like it, and I I think this is great. This is like great music to put behind Why drone too, right? flying, too, you know, or or uh, or jet flying. You know, I got this uh, uh, got this behind the jet flying there. <laughs> it's on the way to the Caribbean. There we go. Ah <laughs> oh, man, that, was bring, that brings back memories. If you uh, you go on YouTube and you'll type in the search like Latin or Tango, you get all, you get some you know, nice nice tunes. I can't sit still in music like this. I love it. <laughs> all right, guys. All right, everybody. Let me get some applause going here. And uh, what else? What else? Uh, we have no us. We have no Australians here, so I don't need any crikeys. No, one on uh, a Norway, uh, the Netherlands. You have any wooden shoe sounds? No, no, but uh, <laughs> no, I got a meh. Meh. <laughs> Viewer discretion is advised. How about that one? I like that voice. I got a whole, I got a whole thing here. There's a whole bunch of these movie things, like uh, in a world. Go where no man has gone before. Viewer discretion is advised <laughs> this summer. <laughs> See you later, guys. I think we All need right. to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Have a good night, Mitch. All right. Take Catch care. You, uh, Thursday. See you later. Okay. You. All right. And everybody, anybody left, thanks for coming by, everybody. I, I appreciate the company and, uh, and the interest in my little my little project here. So uh, with that, I will, uh, will, uh, will disappear and uh, let you uh, say goodbye to Spank here. And we'll see you the next time.
Take care. Bye-bye.